Okay, today we're looking at a silicon rendering. We're going to talk about why it's potentially one of the best rendering systems out at the moment. Now, this is a timber frame extension. We've got cement board. The first thing we're going to do is stick the reveals on. So these are the reveals we're using. This is a mesh. Um, it's basically meshed thin line beads. It's what you get with the rendering system I'm going to show you today. And as you can see, either side of the bead, you've got some mesh. And this is a render we're using. It's called Star Contact White. I'll put all the links in the description below, by the way. Um, and basically, what we're going to do is apply a thin layer on the edges. And then when we've measured and cut the bead, we're going to literally sit it in place. Now, what you'll notice about these beads is they're not very thick. They haven't got much um, profile to them. And that's because this rendering system we're using isn't designed to be put on very thick. It's a thin coat system. So all we're going to be doing is just putting the minimum amount needed to make sure it's safe and it's strong. So we're just going to bed the beads in once we've got them plumbed up. And then we're going to cut the mesh back to the reveals, make sure that the reveals are completely covered with this mesh. And then what you've got is the reveals bedded in nicely. And the second bit, we're going to mix a lot more star contact now because we're going to start covering the walls. I'm going to show you that right now. But basically it's still the same product, it's still the same base coat, it's called Star Contact and it can be used um, throughout multiple backgrounds, it's a multi-purpose plaster. Now here's, here's the mesh, now here's the mesh we'll be using, this is just basically render mesh, you get it with the system again. And um, we're going to just cut 100, meters, 100 millimeter slivers and what we're going to do is cover up where the joins are within the boards. As you can see we've got like a 5 mil gap between the boards, that's crucial because that's going to allow for movement between the boards and it's going to stop it from buckling. But what we need to do because of that is we need to put an extra layer of protection. So like we scrim tape the joins on plasterboard, we're doing the same here. We're just going to cut 100 millimeter slivers, put it in place and then cover it up. Now also with the beads, just get the last bead on, bedded nicely to the wall to wall. Again, you've noticed it's not got much detail, not much thickness. We're just bedding it tightly to the board as long as it's plumb and it's flat. Now once we've done that, once we've got the beads on, we want to measure the length of the wall, the height of the wall, sorry, not the length. And then from there, we're going to cut rolls of this mesh up. I'm going to explain why we're doing this in a minute. Um, yeah, I've got socks on my shoes. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. Basically, I went to the gym in the morning and forgot to bring my work boots. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to put some socks over it to keep them safe. <laughs> anyway, let's avoid that. Let's jump over that a little bit. We're going to apply a tight coat of render to the boards. Directly to the boards as well. You don't need any primers. You can just directly apply it. It's good for that. Um, and we're just putting a tight coat on. The reason for that is I'm going to show you in a minute, but we don't want it too thick. Again, this isn't a system that's designed to be laid on thick render. Star Contact works best with small amounts and it's better that way in terms of application and finish. So we're applying a thin layer here to the boards which work in either side of the beads. And then with a pre cut mesh, we want to run it down. And then what we're going to do is just trowel it through. So we've got it in place. I've used my finger to score it on and then we're just going to trowel all the render through the mesh and make sure that it comes right through. What we want to do and the reason why we put a thin coat on in the first place, we want the mesh to be bedded tight to the boards. We don't want it to be sitting on the top, we want it to be really, really tight and that means we're going to get a firm, tight fixing and it's keyed into the wall nicely. And then we work the mesh right to the edges of the beads. So you've got mesh on the corner beads, you've got mesh working up to the beads, and we've got mesh on the joins. This is what makes this system one of the best rendering systems because you're fully covered. The render is flexible because it's silicon based. Um, so if there is any movement with the boards, if there is any movements with the timber, it'll take it. And then you've got the mesh, which is going to give it that reinforced strength. It's just an all round brilliant rendering system and it really does take a lot for it to, to come unstuck. Now this Star Contact is a brilliant product, it's very flexible to use and very easy. Now when you're applying your mesh you want a 100mm overlap. So what I've done is just score the line and then when we apply the mesh to the next section I know exactly where to stop. And uh, I've got a little guide on where to work to. So that's a little tip for you there. And once the bed mesh has been bedded in what I like to do is go over the whole areas again and basically just pull out any spots and we're going to rule it flat. Now we've got a bit of a hump in this wall, I'm not going to lie, the stud work was a bit dodgy. <laughs> so I'm going to have to pull this hump out. What I've done is basically just applied another layer of this star contact and what I'm going to do is rule it flat. It's quite a nice product to rule, it's different to sand cement but when you get used to it, if you mix it at decent thickness, it's actually a quite nice product to use and it does rule well to be fair. 
So I'm just filling in in low spots. But again, we're just working towards the beads that we've applied before and we don't want it too thick. Don't be putting six mil beads on and using star contacts because it just doesn't quite work. It sags and it can crack. Now once that's dried up a little bit, you want the render to dry, just touch dry basically, and then you want to flow it up as if you would any rendering system. Apply a bit of water where it's needed, but if you catch it at the right time, it's just something you've kind of got to get um, just trial and error with really, but if you catch it at the right time, floats in really well, you can really work it towards the edges and you end up getting a really nice flat wall. Again, it's, it's a bit different to sand cement, it does get, take some getting used to, but once you are used to using this product, it's actually really nice to use. So we did have a bit of a complication, I broke my float during the floating process, I'm not too happy about that, but, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, another thing is once you've um, waited for the render to dry, once it's floated up, we need to put a primer on. This is called Uni Primer. Again, I've explained the process in the links below with the products there. But we want to put this onto the render once it's dried. Now, I actually did it on the same day because it's because the star contact was applied quite thin. It dries quite fast, and you've got time to put the Uni Primer on the day before top coating. This is the silicon top. This is the top coat for the uh, system we're using, and it's basically just paint with aggregate. In you get different thicknesses. But this is, I've gone for the 1mm or the 1.5 I like to use. It's a finer finish and it's generally quite nice. So I always add a bit of water. I find if you use this straight is as it is, it, it struggles to stick to the, uh, to the wall. So if you put a bit of moisture in it, it does make the render a bit gloopier, but it sticks so much more to the boards. If, I find if it's too thick, you'll find a lot of it just falls off and goes on the floor. So a bit of water really helps to lubricate it up. What we're doing is applying a tight coat. Again, I've told you and I keep drumming on about this, it's a tight coat system. But what we're doing is working towards the beads now. So I always apply a thin layer to the wall and then once the layer's been applied, I always scrape it back using a trowel, open trowel, pull the render right back again and what you're gonna do is re remove a lot of the top coated render on. This means that when you come to the later stages, it's just gonna allow you to get it. So you'd really need to pull this back um, now this is a special float from Rafina. This is the float you use for acrylic rendering, it's flat. It's not like the other floats you use for sand cement. And what I wanna do is just small figure of eight motion, small circles, work towards the beads. Why we're working towards the beads is because it's often the beads are a bit low and you haven't got as much render on. So work the render towards the beads in circular motions, working left to right. Pull any excess off with the float if you need to. But if it's flat enough, if you've got the right amount on, you'll find it floats up and the pores close up and you get a really, really nice finish. So the secret to applying the top coat is make sure that you're putting a tight application on. Now when you are doing reveals, what I like to do is swivel from left to the top. This means you're getting nice square reveals. And if your prime work, if your prep work and your base coat was done correctly, it shouldn't be that hard to get a nice square reveals with this system. What we're doing is um, we're applying a tight coat to the reveals here as well, as you can see. Again, working towards the edges, and you run up one way, as you can see here vertically. Run up vertically the other way as well. And then what you're gonna get is a nice tight coat. The secret is, is to make sure you're floating towards the beads first, and then working up and down the reveals. That's what's gonna give you the nice tight, nice tight angles you need. Now, on a longer run like this, what I like to do is work in one meter patches. So I often work alone, if you are alone, and what you want to do, do a metre section at a time. Again, same thing, putting a tight coat on and then pulling it back once you've applied that metre section. Um, and then with little sections at a time, what we want to be doing is working in manageable amounts. We don't want this render to dry out on us. So what I like to do is, once I've done that, is take the bit of, bit of a render onto your trowel and what I do is add a bit of thickness to the edges. This leaves like a slug. And that's going to keep that outer edge dry. So when it comes to us working the next metre, we can work it into itself without worrying about it drying out. Ideally, you'd have two people on this. You've had one person applying, scraping back, and then the other person following behind you, floating it up. It's much better like that. But again, if you need to work on your own, this is how you do it. And I'll be honest, I often work alone. If you've seen the videos, you know that. <laughs> so it is possible. Just working one metre spans as you go across and then making sure that once you've worked into that area you float it up, just float back on yourself and you'll find if you work in smaller sections it is doable and it is easy enough to achieve. So again we're just floating in small circles, really closing the pores up, getting rid of the drag marks left behind with the trowels, 
working towards the uh, reveals, working towards the outer edges. And then once you've done that, it's really not hard to get a nice finish with this system. If your backing's done, your walls are clean, and as you can see here, you get really nice results, clean finish. The color is in the product, so there's no need for painting. And you get a versatile rendering system that's flexible and good in terms of non-cracking. So if you like this video, hit the like button, please subscribe, and click the video near here to watch some more rendering videos and how we do it with sand cement.